uh, DTAs and DTLs. We will then talk about um, Regulation D. We will then talk about Reg M. We'll talk about 10B18. We'll talk about Chapter 11 and a debtor in possession. And we will talk about accelerated filers. So that will be a very brief conversation because it's not that important with the test. All right. And then again, if we have time for any other questions at the end, we will be sure to come back to those. Let's start by talking about deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. So right now we'll do a brief review on deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. And I have a spreadsheet up here on the screen. Before we get into this, let's discuss why these things even exist, right? U.S. companies maintain two sets of financial statements. You have your SEC filings, which go to your shareholders, and you have your tax return, which goes to the IRS. And the purpose of those two sets of filings is totally opposite, right? Your SEC filings, what do you want to show to shareholders in your SEC filings? What do you want those to look like? Anybody know? You can just put it in the chat. What do you want your SEC filings to look like? Yep, you want to show strong earnings. Exactly right. Good, good. What, how about what do you want to show in your tax return? What do you want to show in your tax return? Yeah, you want to show as little income as possible, right? And they're subject to two sets of rules. So it's not as though you're, you're uh, doing anything illegal by having two different sets of financials. It's that SEC filings are prepared in accordance with GAAP. So you want to use the GAAP rules that are favorable. Your tax returns are uh, prepared in accordance with the Internal Revenue Code. So you want to use the IRC rules that will lower your income. So the reconciliation of these two sets of financials is what creates DTAs and DTLs. So what I've done here is I've set up two very simple side-by-side -side income statements, revenues and expenses. I've assumed a tax rate of 40%. And you're just going to create a side-by-side -side income statement using the clues that are provided. Any clue that's not provided, you make up a number, and it's got to be the same on both sides. For any clue you don't get, Make up a number, make up whatever number you want. Just make sure it's the same on both sides. So here we go. Sample question. A company accelerates revenue by $8 million. Is this a DTA or a DTL? Now, this question is a trick question. Nobody can answer this question. Does anybody know why this question is a trick question? Does anybody know why? Why is this question a trick question? why nobody could answer that, why this is a fundamentally flawed question. Yep, there it is, Cameron, Logan, Rich, you got it exactly right. And for bonus credit, does any, yep, you got it, Armand. Does anybody know what movie that's from? Why is it a trick question? Does anybody know what movie that's from? For bonus credit, why is it a trick question? No, that's from My Cousin Vinny. So you can work on your movie watching after you pass the series 79. That's from My Cousin Vinny, though. So a company accelerates revenue, by $8 million for, I haven't told you where I'm accelerating. Where am I showing this money? I have to fill in, for example, for accounting purposes. Without that bold statement, I cannot answer this question. Cannot answer this question. So when they say accounting purposes, that means on your SEC filings. If they say tax purposes, that means on your tax return. This is critical though. So if accounting purposes means you're showing this on your SEC filing. So I'm going to make up numbers. So I'm going to make up $50 million of income on my SEC filings. And I've accelerated by $8 million for accounting. That means SEC is $8 million higher than tax. So it's got to be 42 on my tax return. Now I'm going to make up, remember I said, any clue they don't give you, you make it up. It's just got to be the same on both sides. So I'm going to make up 20 of expenses on both sides. And so again, I've told you I've accelerated by eight, revenue by $8 million for accounting purposes. So I take $50 million for my SEC filings, $42 million on my tax return because it's got to be $8 million higher because that's what I've told you. So my pre-tax earnings on my 10 k are $30 million. My tax return is twenty two. dollars So with a 40% tax rate, that leaves me with $12 million of tax on my SEC filings, $8.8 .8 million on my tax return. So this... This number, thank you. This number on my SEC filings, on my SEC filings, this 12 million of tax, my SEC filings, this is the taxes I should have paid. 
That's the taxes I should have paid. This is the taxes on my tax return, taxes, taxes I actually did pay. All right, so let's talk about this. I should have paid 12. I actually paid 8.8. .8. What do we think? I should have paid 12 million. I actually paid 8.8. .8. What do we think? Is that a DTA or a DTL? I should have paid 12. I actually paid eight. What do we think? Yeah, there we go. A lot of good answers coming in. This is a DTL. Why? Because I didn't pay enough tax. I should have paid 12, only paid 8.8. .8. I did not pay enough tax. And the amount, it's the difference between the two, right? About 3.2 million. Any questions there? Okay, great. So let's move on to the next one. A company accelerates expenses by $12 million for tax purposes. Is this a DTA or a DTL? So I didn't give you any revenue information. So when I'm not given revenue information, I make it up as long as it's consistent on both sides. So 50 and 50. We've accelerated expenses by 12 million for tax purposes. Tax purposes means it's on my tax return. So let's say my expenses for SEC filings are 10. What would it need to be on my tax return? What do you think? It's gotta be 22, exactly right. There you go, yep. Gotta be accelerated by 12 million, there you go. So my pre-tax earnings are 40 million on my SEC filings, 28 million on my tax return. So therefore my taxes are 16 million on my SEC filings, 11.2 on my tax return. So this 16 million is the taxes I should have paid. So I should have paid 16. This is the taxes I actually did pay. So what do we think, DTA or DTL? What do you think, deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability? It's the DTL, why? Didn't pay enough tax. And the amount, is 4.8 million. Let's do one more. Company accelerates revenue by $25 million for tax purposes. Is this a DTA or a DTL? So my revenue for SEC filings, I'm just making up a number, is $20 million. I've accelerated it by 25 for tax purposes. So therefore, on my tax return, it's $25 million higher because it's accelerated for tax purposes. That's $45 million. I didn't give you any revenue fi uh, expense figures. So I'm just going to make it up. It's got to be the same on both sides. If they don't give you a clue, you make it up, same number on both sides. So my pre-tax earnings are 5 million for SEC filings, 30 million on my tax return. That's a pretty big disparity there. So according to my 10K, I should have paid 2 million in tax. On my tax return, I actually paid 12 million. So again, this is the taxes I should have paid, right? And this 12 million is the taxes I actually did pay. So what do we think? I should have paid two. I actually paid 12. Should have paid two. I actually paid 12. DTA or DTL? It's DTA. Why? Why? Because I didn't pay enough. Uh, sorry, I paid extra tax. Excuse me. I paid extra tax. I paid extra tax, right? I, I should have paid two. I actually paid 12. I paid extra tax. So later on in the future, I'll get to pay less on the amount is the difference between the two. Any questions on this topic? Okay, great. Caitlin, anything uh, coming in on the board that you think would be relevant to address at this point? Nope, uh, looks all good here. I didn't hear you there. I said, nope, looks all good. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next topic. 
Very good.